getting started on day two here. We just left the hotel. Lance is getting a cup of coffee. And uh, I'm filling up the diesel can again. Put five gallons in it yesterday. We're going to put another five in it today. The tank was pretty low. And uh, we just want to make sure we have enough fuel to let it run some today in the parking lot. And hopefully get it to the next fuel station. Well, I think we're going to start this morning by seeing uh, if she wants to start. I saw the look in your face there. You didn't want to sit down your coffee and your muffin. You had to consider it. Was it worth it? Alright, I imagine it's going to take a second because it's a little cold, but I think she'll start. You want to have it open to try to shut it off? Or? <clears throat> I have faith in it. I'm going to have to open it up to shut it oh, off the anyway. Battery doors. The oh, not on. yeah. We'll get that real quick. Sorry for the terrible camera skills here, guys, but you're going to have to wait a second. There we go. All right, give it some. Not even give it some. She fires right up. She's hunting a little, but it's cold. It's like all my others. <laughs> Once we get them going. Not gonna lie, I thought it was gonna take a little bit of protesting from the bus, but dude, she wants to go today. You woke her up from her nap and she's like, ah, let's just get it over with. It comes air. And the air is on our minds this morning. Particularly forward of here. Well, it probably wouldn't hurt to let it run and build some of that up so you can start looking at the wipers situation. Okay. Um, I'm probably gonna grab a few things if those wipers teed off of this Rainex <laughs> Rainex 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 <laughs> All right, well I'm going to grab some stuff and I'm going to start checking hub oils. Hub number 1 looks pretty close, but we're going to top it off. pretty dark in there but we're gonna be going through the hubs when we get back I'm gonna go ahead and just order bearings and seals and all that or at least seals but I assume because this is gonna go into service we'll probably just order bearings races all of it number two is looking pretty good they're not very low but they're down a hair so Keep making sure that they're perfectly topped off for the trip. What do we think this one's gonna show us? Looks like this one's been leaking a little bit. Is it overfilled? Eh. Could use a little bit. Let's see if we can go four for four on decent hubs today. That's the lowest of them yet. Looking at it, I don't know why I'm surprised. They all had fluid though. That, that's a good sign. We're going to probably just order new caps for all these as well. We'll get them sealed back up. Well, maybe not new caps. I don't know. A couple of them, the rubber plugs that go in them are feeling pretty dry, rotted, pretty cracked, a little hard to work with, so. We might just get a few new caps and see what we can do with the rest. That one, is, it's like it's leaking out of the cap because it's, it's dry and hard. It doesn't want to flex. Oh, don't want to spill my gear oil. 
all right, well, the oil helps are good. At some point, we're going to want to trawl under there and try to get the diff filled up. I think we're going to drive it up on blocks for that. Well, that's one thing off our list this morning. All right, look at that, Lance. You got one wiper. How about the one that you have to see out of? It'll park itself, but it won't. It won't go? Yeah. But... It sounds like it's bypassing when you do it. It's probably going to need an air wiper motor rebuilt, just like on the other one. Well, that one was making that noise, too. Oh. You going to try messing with it a little more and see if you can yeah, get it to... With it, see if it'll take. Yeah, I can try. Okay. Let's do this without getting my hands jammed up in the air wiper. Is it on to swipe? I'm just going to tell you now, I'm not going to stand out here and keep doing that <laughs> as we go down the road. Is it on? You get one good wipe of rain. That's all you got. Make it count. All right, so one of the next projects we're gonna mess with here is we don't have a working temp gauge on the bus. It was just registering 200 degrees and I came back here and... and none of that's that hot. So we'll pop the temperature sender out. We brought a glow shift one with us. I mean, nothing special, but it'll tell us temperature enough that we're comfortable driving and getting it home. So I'm uh, probably gonna get something to drain the water that's in this out right now. We'll pop the wire off, get this out. I'm gonna have to go get some adapters. We don't have the right brass fittings to make that fit right now. Not a big deal to shop right up the road that as long as we do it before noon, we're fine. So get that screwed in, get a wire ran to the front of the bus. I'm hoping we got a wire somewhere in the chase that's not being used. If not, just zip tie a wire all the way down it. Just got to make it so we have a temperature gauge on the way home. The dash wiring will be really easy. If you guys have never wired one of these before. So this is the harness that plugs into the back of the gauge. And when you're looking at these, uh, green is your sensor input. So green will go to the white. Black of the sensor grounds out. Orange is illumination, just don't even worry about that. Black is ground, and yellow and red are powers. I believe it's red is constant and yellow is switched, like key on power. That might be backwards, doesn't matter. Both of these are getting the same power input to get us home. We'll ground it, not worry about illumination, and tie the sensor in because we shut the batteries off and we shut this thing off. Yeah, I better pick that up or I'm gonna forget about it anyway. So that'll be really easy to wire up in the dashboard. We'll set the gauge somewhere where we can keep an eye on it. And that's the big thing with these. If you're gonna take one of these on a trip, you wanna make sure that you at least know your coolant temperature. And the solenoid's the ground. Yeah, it grounds through itself. So right now we got the meter out. We're starting to check wires here because Lance found a, a bunch of pretty terrible wiring on the side of the engine over there. And so far what we've found is apparently the uh, shutdown solenoid wire to that terminal between that solenoid and right over there where he's working is 208 ohms of resistance. But we've also found, trying to probe out all of the wires for the temperature sensors, that they're not right either. So there actually might be a chance that the temp sender was working, but we found that this temp sensor is on the same post as the shutdown solenoid, which makes zero sense. Unless it was the ground, which it's not. Well, it can't be. It's a sensor input. I mean, that sensor is grounding through itself. It's a one-wire sensor. Now, there's some weird wiring stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff that's been cut and messed with that we're going to have to figure out. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to see what we're going to do here. I think it's going to be time to make decisions whether we just try to wire one to get us home or try to fix this because there's going to be fire from any of these? I don't think so. 
we'll cap the ends of them so that they're dude there's like 10 things but there's i see four things that go nowhere but just cut and laying back here okay those should not be on the same terminal no they definitely shouldn't but we'll have to see what we're gonna do the melted <laughs> all right so i just finished airing up the tires my lance is working on going through the wiring schematic but uh that melted daylight up there that was on fire works now that's a bonus oh, so while i was messing with this stuff got all the tires aired up first off why does no one ever check their inner duels they're always low so what we figured out is this one right here and this one right here are over temps this one is the gauge so over temps are working now so the engine should shut down if it gets too hot so now we're going to trace down this circuit right here to the engine's panel back here make sure it works and see what we can get figured out as far as getting that gauge to work but i don't know that we're going to spend a ton more time on it before we just decide to put the other gauge in because we're slowly starting to burn through the time today where we're going to have stuff open um at noon, pretty much everything closes around Saturday that we're gonna have access to parts for at least industrial places. So we need to make sure that we've got all of our bases covered. And if we need to go out and get parts or fittings and stuff, that we'll have access to it without having to drive forever to get back to town. We're making progress. The punch list is slowly getting shorter. There's also a pretty giant storm rolling in later today, which it looks like we're gonna miss the nasty part of it, but we're gonna have quite a bit of rain. So. We're going to try to make as much progress as we can without hitting that stuff today. And then show it down here on the meter. All right. Okay. So that is across both posts of the solenoid. We're shorted to ground through it. I can go to the case and to the positive, and we've got about three ohms from the positive terminal up here on top to the case. We shouldn't have anything right now or quite a bit, it should be the winding of the coil. So, the shutdown solenoid's toasted. Is it a fire hazard? No, I just don't run it. So we're stopping off at Chappie's Hydraulics here, and uh, I think this is still considered Marion, Ohio. Need to get a couple parts real quick though, and uh, they hooked us up yesterday, and every other time Lance has been out here, they've always got you hooked up, right? Yeah, you know me by name, that's a pretty good thing. You bought too many buses, man. All right, we made it back to the bus. But uh, that cost us a little bit of time. It's a little after 12 right now, and it's probably dropped 15 degrees already. The wind's picking up. As you can see by the windshield, it's suburban. It's starting to rain. Because, I don't know. Who needs to manufacture drama when you do this stuff for fun? Anyway, I've got the coolant temp sensor in. This actually does protrude all the way through the adapter, so we are in direct flow. And we're going to temp wire this thing and make it work because it's cold and raining and this just needs to make it home. We've already made the decision with all the wiring stuff we've seen here. We're going to rewire this when we get back, at least the engine bay. Uh, I talked to Dad from when he got the engine running from the previous owner before we were, it ended up here. And they didn't mess with most of it. Uh, he asked the customer about it. The customer said he'd take care of it. He just wanted to get it running. Obviously, he didn't get around to that. So Lance is tracking down a wire that's going to run to the front that's got good continuity so I can put the sensor lead to it. The ground here, I've just got a little wire I made up real quick. We're going to ground it up at the throttle linkage. We'll get this wire ran across the engine bay. We should have good coolant. We've got the system sealed back up. We've got a little bit that we drained out here. We're going to put that back in once we clean it. There's a little bit of dirt in there, so we're going to filter that, put it back in, and top off with water. I'm actually really happy with how green that is, Consider we put two gallons of coolant and like six gallons of water in it. Uh, we picked up a few supplies while we are out to make sure that hopefully we have all the sizes of hose in case we have an issue on the way home. We're not going to try to change them right now, but we got them just in case. I don't know if you guys can see it, we got coolant up in there. It's working its way down a little bit, but what'd you say? We're getting it filled up. I think we're going to start it and let it start running. Try to get the cooling system bled a little more. We filled up three gallon jugs. We've got more water to top off as we go as it bleeds. Yeah, go ahead and we'll we'll fire it up. I don't see anything that's in the way of anything spinning.
taking it around the block for the first time. Went and did two laps. Got up into second gear. Brakes are working pretty good. Steering's good. Seems like it's got adequate power. We'll back it in. Yep. I'll get out and help you guide it. All right, so we just got the new gauge going on the dash and it works when I just had these sitting together. So I'm gonna get the connector out. We're gonna crimp that real quick. So we have continuity to the front. The sensor is working. It's registering the same temperature I'm getting with the temp gun here. So now he's gotta find 12 volt because the gauge he has is a 12 volt, not a 24 and MCI's are 24 volt chassis. So uh, I'll get this crimped up. Lance is working on finding that 12 volt and dash connected to. Then we'll have a working temp gauge. All right, so we got gauges working now. Getting pretty close to being able to take this thing on the road, but we need to double check the fluid in the rear axle. So we got up on blocks right now. I'm gonna crawl under there and check the diff fluid real quick. All right, we're throwing that next five gallons in, diesel. Then I think we've got everything we wanted to get done finished to go try to drive this thing. But it's like three o'clock right now and we haven't had breakfast or lunch yet. So we're gonna go get some food come back here and eat real quick because it's going to suck to find a place to park this thing when we get there. But when we get back, probably going to head straight to a fuel station, get this thing filled up. We'll check all the fluids on it again when we get to our fuel stop and see how many miles we can get in for the day. There's some more stuff we'd like to fix, but you got to pick your battles. We're going to have plenty of time to work on it when we get home. If we don't need it for right now, we've got lights. It stops, steers, goes brakes all that fun stuff be enough to get us moving at least there's no way we're gonna make it all the way back to Nashville today so we'll definitely have some time tonight when we stop at a hotel to uh, get some more stuff fixed all right so we're getting lunch on the bus real quick here before we hit the road how you feeling like I always do when we drive when we roll out with one of these I'm thankful that it's cool out because we don't have uh, air. Um, I'm a little anxious because except for the mechanical, the mechanical stuff's awesome on here. All of the electrical is, is, a, is phantom right now. Absolutely nothing works. Um, I suspect there's a master switch someplace in this coach that we haven't found. But I'm also thankful we don't have that because maybe that's uh, the good Lord's way of telling us that, hey, you probably don't want to flip that on. We really haven't found any mice or anything in this. Um, so that's pretty cool. Usually they do a lot of damage. Everything we've opened up has been dry. Um, this I'm anxious. we got old tires, older tires on here. The steers are about six years old. I'm okay with that. There's no cuts on anything that we found. The steers were holding air, too. I only had to put about 10 pounds in those. I'm a little anxious, but what about you? I mean, I think we're going to go. I don't think it's going to cause us too much issue. And whatever it does, it's not, nothing that we can't fix. Auto linkage, you're okay with all that back there? Yeah, it seemed to be working fine on the test drive. Uh, we got it up into second gear. Oh, yeah. So. We don't have a... We don't have an emergency shutoff on this bus or a shutoff. We no, found I, out the uh, 24 volt solenoid ride is, sh is shorted to ground and we were using a pull solenoid to pull off the rack so um, i'll be watching the temp like i said a second ago the only thing that's working on here is the temp gauge that we installed ourselves on its own single circuit yeah uh but the lights work the front lights work we'll need them because it's raining you got tail lights you got turn signals that is working yes yeah we, we have the really important stuff but like we came to the conclusion earlier you got to pick your battles when you're out here. We could fix everything in this parking lot if we wanted to, but we'll be here for a month. We just got to kind of pick the stuff that's enough to get us back to Tennessee and then start working on it from there. We'll check in a couple hours. Yeah, we'll see where that's at. But that'll be the next video because uh, I think that's going to end uh, day two of repairs and keep an eye out for the next video and we'll, we'll be rolling some, south. We'll probably get some uh, when the, when the, in the airport, like in the military, when they have an air show, there's that one... Uh, the one jet that flies off on the wing 
what's that called? So you'll, you'll probably have some of that too. Uh, whatever that's called, the uh, wingman. Some wingman shots today. I'll definitely do some recording as we go. I mean, we're definitely going to make some stops, and we've already kind of planned out about every 20 miles till we get going and get some good trust in it. We're going to stop, check all of our temperatures and everything, but I'm pretty confident. I haven't seen anything that scared me off yet. I've definitely the, got worse stuff up and going. All the wheel seals. I mean, all the axles uh, check out. We checked the main differential, topped it off. I mean, that's great. It wasn't low. You could feel it from the get-go, so... Man, underneath this, and, and I don't know if Tyler's done any of the video underneath it, it's immaculate. Underneath. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have, but it is it spotless, is spotless under this bus. So for all you haters, there's no big gaping rust holes. You know, that, I don't know, I digress. All right, well, keep an eye out, guys. There'll be another video coming up real soon, and uh, it should be the trip of us taking this thing from Marion, Ohio, back down to just outside of Nashville, Tennessee.